Welcome everybody. So this is our first pit for today. Uh, we're, uh, I'm Alex Berry, I'm the soil management engineer for the province of Ontario. And uh, this is my colleague, Dan. I'm a soil scientist or land resource specialist with the Ministry of Agriculture in, uh, in Guelph as well. So I, I'm going to just uh, start this first video off by talking a little bit about the soil profile. And I'll probably cut it off because I can talk a long time about a soil profile. Um, but we were able to pull off a nice big chunk of the soil uh, pit face here to expose some of the soil horizons. Um, so first off, we're in uh, basically a lake bottom, an ancient lake bottom. So it's fairly level topography here and uh, clay deposits mostly at the surface uh, that would have been laid down when we were under probably hundreds of feet of water here about 10,000 years ago. So uh, just to point out the soil profile, so as we know the soil profile develops in horizons the first surface horizon is typically, you can tell because it's rich in organic matter. And so you can really see that line kind of across here. It's about 30 centimeters thick or so, maybe a bit less here, of rich organic matter in the surface layer. We would call that an AP horizon. You can see this brownish layer that's down here, and it might be hard to see from the, from the camera, but again, so this soil has some bright orange models in it and it's pretty brownish gray in color. So this would be a B horizon, we would call this a BG horizon and the G stands for, for glaying which is this gray color and then these prominent models as well as part of that process. And all that color means is that this soil profile is holding on to a lot of water for a prolonged period of time during the year. When we get down here we get into a, a transition horizon and probably that would probably be our first C horizon which is your parent material. So the C resin is the parent material. And then down at the bottom here, you might not be able to see it because it's pretty fine, but these are what we would call varved clays, varved silt. So you can kind of see the layering. So that was sitting like this in the soil profile. You can see how nice and flat that is. So these layers are all deposited slowly in water. And the other thing that's interesting about the parent materials in Ontario, most of them are developed from limestone and so we use uh, hydrochloric acid and it reacts with free carbonates and so you'll just see some fizzing. So that's how we know kind of where, that's about how deep soil has developed in Ontario when you find the fizzing in the material down at depth. So in this case, you know, somewhere around 75, 80 centimeters. And so this soil is known as the Atherley clay um, and you can find it here and you can also find it all the way to, uh, all the way out to Prince Edward County. So there you go. So I should mention a bit about the, the plot. This is our first treatment here. So this was a, a broadcast rye, uh, radish, and crimson clover in the fall last year, uh, and then no-tailed into corn, uh, obviously this spring. And what we're seeing here is, is good root structure, lots and lots of fibrous roots in the profile and, and fairly, um, fairly good structure. Um, what we'll see over the, and a worm. There's our, our first worm for the day. Um, basically what we're seeing here, and, and spoil alert for the next pits, um, is very, very compacted, very you know massive structure. Um, so this field has a history of, of somewhat tillage, maybe some no-till over the last four years. It's hard to get a good story, even out of the two people that are here apparently know everything about the site. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but, but generally, what we do know is this site is compacted and poorly. Um, not compacted poorly, but poorly, poorly, uh, you know what I mean. Um, so we are seeing a very, we've, we basically took the top of this field, the first four inches all over the field, made it one big patio slab. Um, because you can just you can just peel off layers of of compacted topsoil, and as we uh, as we go look at you know more of the treatments with fewer roots in it, you get big big blocky structures um, in the in the profile. So uh, the benefit of having all these fibrous roots growing uh, last fall and then uh, the corn into the spring is is we've got some real good you know fibrous material that's breaking up some of this big packed structure um, so you can see some of these roots and everywhere I, I kind of peel at it you, you get a root in a crack uh, and, but in small cracks so um, we'll move on to the rest of the pits and we'll uh, we'll sort of compare and contrast I guess um, to what we see in each one yeah
Okay, so here we are in pit number two. This is the uh, no-till, no, uh, no ground cover. Um, so this was like the bare minimum amount of effort to put corn into ground because you did nothing to it and it still grew. Um, but what do we see in here, Dan? Like this is compared to the, and spoil alert for the rest of the site, uh, we're not gonna see this across the, the remainder of the locations, are we? This this nice sort of, you know, blocky structure uh, in, the, in the topsoil. No, not at all. So we can see a couple of inches at the top here of some kind of some, some more platy structure. Um, you can see how that kind of, ooh, that's kind of breaking off into these really thin, uh, these thin plates. Uh, it's a couple of inches and then, yeah, then you get into this pretty nice structured soil and you can see the roots kind of throughout that entire soil mass. But you can see that nice uh, blocky structure of the topsoil and certainly not something we're going to see at some of the other sites further on or later in the video, I guess. And um, this was... Uh... This was, again, spoil alert, this is our winning corn stalk for uh, as far as depth of root that I found. I traced, I started tracing a big tap root down through here and I kind of gave up and actually it didn't go very far at all. Um, but we can see a, a root that's made it, what, you know, uh, 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters into the yep. soil profile. Um, so that's, that was on, on the hunt for some moisture and it, it definitely found some down here. <laughs> um, but uh, like I said, decent structure, lots of roots, uh, good organic matter, uh, and then even down into the, the subsoil layer, getting a little bit more organic matter. That's not, not no-till doing that in one year, um, but that's maybe uh, um, we haven't, you know, interfered with that root uh, root mass, you know, in, in some of the tillage plots we're going to see. But um, again, really interesting to see that um, this this sort of you know, much more loose structure um, between the rows than in the next couple. Yeah, of Yeah, so it's across at. the entire soil pit, not just in in zones like we've seen, or like we'll see at some of the other the other pits. So this structure is kind of consistent across the entire thing, and just for you know, a means of comparison, we can see again it's the same clay material with the bright orange models in it, and so um, you know, impeded drainage again in this soil. Once you get, especially once you get into that subsoil, so that's holding on to a lot of a lot of water, and it's not letting water. It's not going to let water through very easily. Um, but you can see the roots are making it through, and the water makes its way down those root channels as well, right? So, yeah. Do we have a plant? Yeah, that's where I was going. Um, so I, I tried to pull one of these straight up out of the ground, old leg arms here. He uh, he yanked that one out, but he cheated and he pulled it out sideways. Yeah. So um, but like this root structure is very much, you know, incorporated into the into the ground structure. So it's it's meandering through those um, small breaks in those those you know blocks of soil. Uh, whereas we'll see it in the next one the roots just went down the big channels so it just pulled right out um comparatively yeah. but uh and then you can see how the uh when the aggregates are smaller how the roots are able to penetrate through the aggregates as well you can see the roots going through and they're really holding on to the sides of the aggregates and what we'll see later on is in those larger cracks the roots kind of don't really hold on to anything they're going down those cracks but then when you pull the plant up they just come straight up and they don't have any soil attached to them like this so and you know if you're going to split hairs um you know probably better nutrient uptake uh, in, in something like this, you're going to have more soil to root contact. Um, so yeah. that's just more, you know, if you got more locations to do business, you can do more business. Um, whereas in some of the structures, you know, if it's just going down a, a, a crack in the soil, it's only got a very limited amount of nutrients to pull through and it's got to work a little bit harder. So um, we're not really seeing a, a noticeable distance in the stands of corn as far as, you know, what you could explain by, you know, nutrient uptake or whatever. Um, but it's been a fairly normal year, I guess, as far as crop. But if we got into a, a, some tougher conditions, I would expect to see a little more variety across these stands of, stands of corn. So pit three, this was a deep rip in the fall. And then again, uh, like we'll see in the next two, the spring sort of freshened strip till uh, blades only. Uh, and what we're seeing really kind of agrees with that story. So uh, Dan, wouldn't you agree there's, there's a, a few more cracks in this soil than what we've seen across the site? 
Yeah. Um, you can certainly see them. They're much more obvious here. You can see the crack here coming all the way up. There's one over here coming right up into this row. So you can certainly see that the deep rip has broken up the soil. And you can see that this is the, this is kind of that deeper plow pan, somewhere around a foot down or 30 centimeters. And you can see that we've, you know, we've, we've broken through you that You really that kind of loosened pan. that up, right? And we've loosened it up, but we still have these fairly massive, like you can see here, aggregates. This whole chunk wants to fall out. Um, so it's still quite massive, except you've just got some more cracks in between some them. Bigger macropores. And that's yep. kind of what we're seeing with the roots here. Um, I pulled this one out, or I think Dan pulled this one out. Um, and we've got some good tap roots coming, um, but I wouldn't say they were holding on to anything because we probably pulled those out of cracks. Um, yep. So this one was pretty easy to pull out uh, compared to the no-tail, which I couldn't pull out of the ground at all. Um, so that's kind of what we're seeing. We just had a real long conversation that we probably won't put in this video about, uh, you know, kind of the theory behind the, the, the tillage implement, but the deep rip, all it's done is it's lifted that profile and broke up the bigger aggregates, but it hasn't done anything on an individual aggregate level. Um, I can find a good one here. There's a good one. Um, and see all the roots. Uh, if I was to break this apart, and uh, um, when I break this apart, all you're gonna see is, um, you know, roots. So it's the roots have done the tillage here uh, instead of the sort of the mechanical tillage, which, you know, separated this chunk of soil from the rest of it, um, which got your roots down. So the, the corn looks pretty good. Uh, they tell me this was the, kind of the earliest corn to emerge. Uh, it looked like it was way ahead. And it probably was because it had all these cracks that it could get down to moisture and get good roots established. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, did, the, did the deep ripping really achieve what you wanted to do from a compaction standpoint? And I don't know what you think, Dan, but yeah, it, well, it hasn't, that's a pretty... <laughs> yeah, it hasn't done too much. The, the, you know, the aggregates, these massive aggregates are still pretty hard and you can't really get through them. And what we were talking about before as well is that you know, you've given yourself you know, compared to some of the other sites we've looked at today, maybe an extra five inches um, of root growth within those those cracks. So you've kind of elongated those cracks. You've gotten through a little bit of the plow uh, pen that's down here, but that's about it. But again, you're still pulling out, you know, these massive chunks. Um, and, you know, this is just the plow pan sitting on top. So you can see that that's what the deep rip has done. It's basically broken this off on, on both sides and that's kind of it. So it's a tool in the toolbox for sure, the Deep Ripper. I don't want to sound like I'm, you know, against it. It's it's definitely helped this profile to kind of alleviate some of the sort of the massive chunk, but it hasn't it hasn't gone, you know, the next step to get uh, real good soil health between the rows. Uh, it has made some small, just by virtue of the shank running through there, it has made some better aggregate um, or some smaller aggregates. So that's kind of what we're seeing here, you know, nice and small and, and broke up. Some of that's the roots doing some tillage for us, but you know, jam my knife into that. It's, uh, they're a little bit bigger. That one's actually not too bad because we got some, some weed cover crop going. Um, but it's still pretty, still pretty solid in there. So. And then again, um, you know, just to highlight that the soil is very uniform across the site. So they're really comparable um, soil pits. We get into that same underlying clay that's really modeled. This one's really, really nice and bright. Um, and so again, uh, clays, silty clays, holding a lot of water um, for for a long part of a long part of the year. And again, uh, the site's not is not tiled, right? And so we at least don't think it's it's been tiled. And so um, it takes a while for this for the water to come out of this soil in the spring. So. So here we are in pit number four. This is the fall strip till. Uh, and in that fall pass, there was a, a shank that went through here and put some fertilizer on. And then again, in the springtime, uh, similar to what we're gonna see in the next, the next pass and what we saw in the previous pass, it had that spring blade pass. Um, so we'll, we'll see some of that too. Um, but definitely you can, you can kind of see the effect of the shank on here. It is a little bit, there is some more cracks uh, right in that in that pass. You could I was trying to dig it up over here. Um, there is some definite, you know, the the aggregates are, are a little bit looser uh, right in that pass compared to, you know, something out in the middle. They're a little bit more 
stuck together or a little more a little more massive than what we were what we were seeing in the other ones um but again we got this platy structure on top we have this uh this sort of you know tillage shelf i guess at that kind of little the two inch working depth yep. and then again we've got that sort of historical plow pan um you know hard transitional interface there uh between the two layers of soil um but you know similar story to um what we've kind of observed you know, sort of throughout the day um just looking at this looking at each pit earlier um same idea some roots down deep uh we've got a, some you know decent vertical roots here this this uh this corn stalk was a little easier to pull out of the ground um, than some of the previous ones um, but but not too bad lots of roots um you know again a, a, a pretty okay stand of corn considering you know the compaction conditions we're in um and that could be you know seasonally driven too so uh, but definitely there is a, a lack of, of good vertical structure i would say yeah we're getting a, a good mixture of of kind of aggregate sizes right from something kind of like this which is uh uh you know kind of intermediate i suppose uh as we'll see from uh, across the different sites today um but then you're also getting you know some stuff that's a little bit smaller and, and more manageable um like this right that's uh directly under under the roots and that, that might be beneficial. because of that that shank pass too so there's one that would have been between the rows yep. there's a big crack there that's that's kind of developed, but underneath the roots, if I'd poke at it with my knife, maybe, um, you know, a lot smaller structure. Some of that might be the fact that the corn root has, has done a little bit of tillage, but um, it's definitely, uh, I think the strip tiller has definitely broke up some of this, some of this nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, and again, um, like we like we've seen, or we'll see at pretty much all the sites today. Um, below the topsoil, you get into this grayer layer, and in this one in particular, it's pretty heavy. Um, but we can see the the really bright um, orange models that are forming in the soil as a result of poor drainage. And so again, um, a soil that uh, that can um, get compacted pretty easily if it's worked when it when it's really wet and so you can see the the gray colors with the models really a good indication that there's water saturation in this soil for a prolonged period so not not really a soil profile that you could just wait three or four days and and be out of the woods from a compaction standpoint it's it's yeah. a, a really got to take drainage a little more seriously than just time i guess so i don't believe this field is tile drained I'm looking off to people on the wings. Can't say for sure. We dug all of these kind of randomly and we didn't hit a tile. So whatever that tells you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, getting that profile dried out is going to be a definite challenge in a site like this, wouldn't you say? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. And you can see the natural cracking in the clays here starting to show up as the, the kind of face of the profile dries up. So again, um, when the roots can, they'll take advantage of those existing channels to get down deeper into the soil profile. And you can see again over here, that plow pan layer near the surface with four inches down or so, and it runs all the way across the entire soil profile. So it's pretty consistent, except it gets broken up again, um, where the, the tillage occurred. So you can see it, especially sort of between the between the rows outside of the strip till, um, definitely the roots are taking the more uh, advantageous horizontal route than the, uh, you know, vertical through the through the uh, soil profile. So, you know, over here where we didn't get that work worked area from the strip tiller in the fall, uh, definitely a little harder to get a root down through that that layer of soil. Okay, so welcome to pit number five. So this pit is the uh, the spring strip till uh, with the uh, just the blades only, uh, and we're working this you know strip about four inches deep, and that's kind of showing in the roots. Um, I mean, having described that, uh, I wouldn't be able to go in here blind and just figure out what that you know that that's exactly what happened. But what we are seeing. Uh, bigger, uh, nice big root ball, but the and the roots are quite vertical but then we're seeing this uh the secondary pan eh dan yeah there's two and you can see them really well right here so there's the secondary pan here 
And then there's the, the upper pen right there. And so. And, and this was, so the history of this site, I guess, is a little bit varied in whether it was tilled or not and fallow or, or whatever, but some tillage, some no tillage. And, and this would be kind of the, the averaged work to depth, I guess. So that's why we're seeing that real big structure. And this would be, you know, from, from years way back, probably. More um, of a historical plow layer. And then anything with uh, anything interesting going on in the lower depths or same story? Yeah, it's the same story. So the soil is pretty uniform across the site, but we certainly see some nice uh, modeling, some bright model colors in there, and they get brighter and brighter as we get deeper into the soil profile. So again, showing that this soil holds on to water for a considerable part of the year. Um, and likely that contributes to some of the issues with compaction because the soil is often yeah, wet when it's worked. Definitely a, a nice wet sand is going to be easy to compact. Um, and that's one thing about this site is it's had a lot of traffic on it. So Normally in a, in a field where you would get, you know, routine tram lines, uh, you could kind of pick out a compacted layer, but this, safe to say this field is pretty uniformly compacted <laughs> yeah. from what we've dug out. Um, like, look at the size of these. You can look at the aggregates. size of these, yeah, if you want to call them <laughs> aggregates, and so that have been kind of pulled up by, by the bucket to dig the soil pit, so they're fairly large, and what you can see is where the where these claws are kind of breaking in the cracks. You can see here that there's some nice roots going down, and so they're gonna basically follow those cracks to get down deeper into the soil because they can't get through the actual mass of this clod. And this, this second shelf is gonna act as kind of an impediment to water movement um, through the soil, so, and, and maybe that's why some of these roots kind of give up here, uh, but the corn still looks half decent compared to the rest of the field. So it, it might be able to find enough water laying on top of this pan to, to set, uh, satisfy its growth stage, especially in this season. If we were in a little bit of tougher conditions, maybe you wouldn't see um, such a good stand of corn, but. Yeah, um, then we can still see the odd root kind of down lower yep. in, in the profile kind of poking through. So some of the roots have fallen. You can see this one is following probably an old, uh, either a, a worm channel. Like a worm channel or, to me. Uh, yeah, that's gone down. You can see the dark topsoil that's fallen into that, into that, uh, into that channel. Um, and so that's the only way they're gonna get through the material. And this, this corn stalk was a little bit easier to pull out than, uh, than ones we've seen in, in previous. So the, the root structure is there, but it's, it hasn't really, um, you know, adhered itself to the ground, I guess. Yeah, and we should point out too, the topsoil depth here is probably about 30 centimeters and it's pretty consistent across the field, but you can see that right at that 30 centimeter mark is where you get in that second uh, plow pan layer that we're having. Right where the, maybe the subsoil was compacted a little bit more than the, um, than the topsoil itself. Yeah. Probably a change in organic matter. And then you would point it out, the, the real platey structure of this, this uh, topsoil, um, just the, the yeah, really that's, fine layers. Of, yeah, and that's certainly evidence of compaction as well, right near the surface. And so you've got these really thin platey structures that are showing up and you can kind of break this into these really thin, thin layers. And so that's another sign that there's some compaction issues at the surface as well here. All right, very good. Okay, so welcome to pit number six. Uh, this was the vertical tillage pit. Um, and basically what we're seeing here is exactly that. So we've got, um, you know, two, three inches of vertical tillage over this pass. And that's what we're seeing here, right, Dan? We got this, kind of this shelf here. Yeah, you got the nice shelf um, all the way across the pit. And look at our roots. They haven't even tried to get into the ground. <laughs> so what are we seeping, seeing deeper in this profile? Well, you can see here um, the uh, the topsoil ending somewhere here about uh, 30 centimeters or so, about a foot thick. And then we get into this uh, this grayer or browner color and you can see uh, some pretty mi uh, bright models in there which are showing us that there's uh, there's poor drainage in this soil, uh, which is not surprising given the, the high clay content of these soils. So the uh, as far as the, the effectiveness of the vertical tillage, the stand of corn isn't terrible. Um, like I said, we... Uh, I ran across here and tried to pull a pull a corn stalk out, and there these ones are pretty easy to pull out. I think that's right behind you, um, just the one laying on the ground oh, yeah, there. Right here. So I mean that was about 50 pounds. Hey, we got a worm for free. Um, that was about what 50 or 60 pounds to pull that out of the ground, um, and that's the extent of the root structure uh, in this pit. So there you go. <laughs> and you can see as well from standing behind us here. 
can see some uh, some fairly oversized aggregates, so you can see that we've got some compaction issues here um, in the in the topsoil, and so you can see this guy here. It's pretty massive, and you drop this on the ground, and it won't even break open. And look at the roots. Like this would have been kind of on a natural crack, right? Um, yep. How that sort of aggregate came out. So the the roots were following, definitely following these cracks down um, through that structure. So very interesting to see. But this this one, this is exactly how the excavator pulled that out of the ground. So um, it's pretty it's pretty massive. <laughs> Yeah, and it's pretty consistent across across the entire um, across the entire soil pit, which is what we would expect. Yeah, I'm not seeing any real variation and stuff. We got some some deeper roots, but um, I didn't chase this one all the way to the ground um, or all the way down to the end. But it's it's really just finding those macro pores. It hasn't really got a very defined structure to the uh, to the root system. Yeah, we can see a few kind of you know in some areas, like I said, down in the cracks where the roots are penetrating deeper. But for the most part, they're like they're up here, they're hitting that, that plow pan or that tabletop and they're just kind of going horizontal from there.